History, Heresy and Heritage. This is a um, lecture for the Worldviews in Nordic Society module at the Estwell University College as part of the Nordic Citizenship Education course. For my wonderful international students that are going to come and have a lesson on this on the 30th of August. So that's what I want you to... Uh, this, that's the kind of deadline for watching this one. So. We talked last time about how um, the reception um, it, about uh, the reception of myths is probably the easiest thing to study. Uh, a lot of the other ways of interpreting uh, myths by structural interpretation or looking at the rituals that go on behind it, or the history that goes on behind it, are, are, are very speculative because we don't know so much about what's going on. Um, so, um, so this week we'll be looking at the reception in um, both the Middle Ages and um, and. Uh, in this in this video, and then the class will be looking more, more at modern treatments. Um, so, and I've tried to formulate it into three ways of reacting to myths: um, history, heresy, and heritage. Um, and yes, they all begin with H. I'm extremely proud of myself. So let's go on. Um, the first one is history, and and this is a really normal thing to do. Um, basically saying that these uh, myths are, are wonderful but essentially they're based on um, historical um, myths, uh, well no, historical stories, historical human beings. Odin was um, a, a one-eyed warrior, Thor was um, an abrasive guy that used the hammer an awful lot um, and, and you know maybe he was a blacksmith, I don't know. Um, and this is actually, um, this idea of, of saying that the gods were originally historical humans is called a humorism. It's, uh, it's a really usual, usual treatment of um, other religions in antiquity, right back from um, about two or three years, two or three hundred years before our era. Um, and of course it distinguishes between the idea of God as a universal principle of the universe um, and um, God is basically a very big human being. Um, and, and, and that's definitely there in the philosophy of these religions. Uh, and it just plays a lot on this. Obviously, um, if Thor was the universal principle of the universe, then there wouldn't be films about him. So Odin was a guy from Asia, um, and all the supernatural stuff was just added, added in in between. And that is the, that is the historical approach. And it's not specific to Christianity, but it is the way Christians did tend to look at Greek and Roman religion as well as the Norse religion. Notice that this is therefore both an ideological treatment of the um, of the myths. It's kind of Christian Christians versus pagans, but it's also a historical um, and academic way of doing things. Why did people come up with these stories, or where did they come from? Um, the second one, which is probably more familiar, I suppose, it's a bit more predictable, and that's that it's heresy. Obviously, um, the Nordic countries did adopt Christianity as their main religion, and therefore they outlawed um, paganism um, after a while. The tradition in um, religion, uh, the transition in religion went smooth. And you think, though, uh, we've already mentioned that the Norse gods, um, they weren't really gods, and there's this, um, they weren't really gods in the philosophical sense. So you don't find in the Nordic countries a kind of philosophical discussion as you do in Spain between the, between um, Christians and um, and philosophical giants like Maimonides or Avicenna. Uh, and the later persecution of witches, for example, that we know a great deal about, is definitely takes place within the Christian worldview. So this clash between the two, two worldviews, although it did take place as a political struggle, um, wasn't necessarily a legal, um, wasn't quite so much of a harsh legal system after a while. Um, Norwegians basically just adopted their, um, um, their leader's religion, and that's entirely in keeping with the pagan way of doing things, of course, with the heads of households being also religious leaders. It seems to have come. It seems to have been a shift that came naturally um, to them. That being said, I'm not saying the religious violence didn't happen. It's just that the transition and the transition um, once once it happened um, politically didn't seem to involve that much legal brutality. And then the third um, the third approach is the heritage. The idea that these are my my gods. These gods make me special. They're something that made me special. So even Snodder, the guy in the 1200s who um, who wrote these myths down, may have been motivated by this idea that the uh, this is what makes Iceland um, a little bit special. But um, although obviously he is um, he's definitely um, features strongly in in the first two approaches. Where this approach really comes into its own is when it comes to um, romantic national romantics in the 1800s, who were definitely saying wanted to study the um, Norse gods as a way of saying that my where I live, where I am, is special. Um, it's of course a completely mistaken idea. Um, Odin um, is not necessarily unique to um, to Scandinavian countries or Nordic countries. 
Um, other countries um, have worshipped Odin. Um, gods like humans um, have always um, travelled. And, and why would you give a nationality to Odin anyway? Um, only the most brazenly confident historian would claim to know the de details of a geographical particulars of a, of a god's birth. The truth of the matter doesn't seem to make as much impact as the emotive value though. Okay, we don't really know who or, or where Odin was first worshipped, um, but once somebody has started saying and calling these gods national gods or Nordic gods, um, it has a motive value, just like saying um, your eyes are like the stars. Uh, it doesn't have to be true. Once somebody said it, it has emotive value. You change the nature of the relationship. So. This idea of a heritage is a performative, it's not a good description, but it's definitely a performative and we can identify what effects that had in society. So those are the three um, approaches. Um, you can look at the, um, or, or pagan myths have been, or Nordic myths have been approached as both history and heresy and heritage. Um, none of this really touches on the discomfort that we sometimes feel about the way these myths were allied with racism and modernity. There's nothing um, wrong, of course, with saying that this is, um, I have a, a historical connection, or with celebrating your um, fictional contact with uh, geography and history. There's, it's okay to say that this area I feel a special connection to. What really inspired so many European racists uh, was what probably justified medieval slavery in the first place. It was distasteful both within the stories as well as in the reception of the stories, and that's the gods' treatments of characters who aren't like themselves. And we'll be looking at that on Thursday.